In this training video, we will cover all of the differences between the old and the new USCED billing systems. This video is intended for those of you who have already been trained on using USCED prior to October 2018. If you were trained to use USCED after October, you do not need to watch this video as you have never been exposed to the old billing system. The first thing to understand is the difference in terminology between the old and the new billing systems. In the old system, we had services and service lines. In the new system, we just have services. In the old system, we had pay regions, in the new system, that was changed to service zones. In the old system, we use the terms AR and AP, which are short for accounts receivable and accounts payable. In the new system, we have replaced those with customer billing and service provider pay. Also, we had AR rates, AR rate sets, and AP rate sets in the old system. All of those are gone now and have been replaced with a much easier to understand service code system. Two things in the new billing system, services and service codes, apply both to customer billing and service provider pay. Let's talk about services first. What is a service? A service is a non-tangible product you offer to your customers. Some examples of services are sign language interpreting, house cleaning, and dog grooming. You might recognize that this used to be called service lines in the old billing system, and you would be right. In the old billing system, we did have something called services, which were actually subsets or flavors of service lines. For example, in the old system, under a sign language interpreting service line, you might have had American Sign Language and Signed Exact English services. In the new system, we no longer have subsets of services, so customers' preferences will now be stored in the event details and service requests. Now, let's talk about service codes. What is a service code? Simply put, they are variations in customer billing or in service provider pay for each service. Some agencies call these billing or pay differentials. For example, if you have a sign language interpreting service, you may want to have service codes such as regular, short notice, holiday, and specialized for that service. Service codes can be used for customer billing, service provider pay, or both. In the old system, these had to be separate and they were called AR rate sets and AP rate sets. Let us now focus on the customer billing aspect of the new system. When a service provider is assigned to a service request, the scheduler will now choose a service code to use to bill the customer. In the old system, the scheduler would choose an AR rate set. To set up the different rates to bill your customer for each service code, you would go into the group settings for that customer, add a service code, and fill out all of the fields. In the old system, if you wanted to charge different customer different rates, you had to create separate AR rate sets for each one of them. In the new billing system, you no longer have to do this. You can apply the same service code to all of your customers, and what each customer would be billed for that service code depends on what you put in for that customer in their group settings. Now we are going to talk about the service provider pay aspect of the new billing system. This is where the biggest improvement is in the new billing system. The pay index system is gone. The pecking order system is gone. The new system is much simpler and more straightforward. And in fact, now works almost identically to customer billing. For customer billing, we had services and service codes. For service provider pay, we add one more element, which is the concept of service zones. Service zones were called pay regions in the old system. The new service zone systems have one major improvement. USCID no longer uses zip codes in any of its decision-making logic. The primary motivation behind this is to allow USCID to be used by customers doing work internationally. Another reason for moving away from zip codes is to give you the ability to define different service areas in a completely abstract way. You can now organize your interpreters however you want. For example, you could have service zones called North and South. Or, 
You could have service zones called California and Ohio, or you can have service zones called red and blue. Each service provider has a home service zone, which is the zone they live in. Service providers can also add as many additional service zones as they want to their profile. Service providers will get service requests blasts for their home service zone and for any additional service zone they have added to their profile. This replaces the old zip code and radius system. When a scheduler assigns a service provider to a service request, the scheduler will now choose a service code to use to pay the service provider. In the old system, the scheduler would choose an AP rate set. To set up the different rates to pay your service providers for each service code and zone, you would go into the service provider settings for that person, add the service code, and fill out all of the fields. In the old system, service provider pay was tied into the paperwork system and had a pecking order system using a combination of service, service line, AP rate set, and pay region. Also in the old system, it was challenging to set up all of the rates you wanted to pay your service provider on one screen. Now with the new system, you can see all of the rates you want to pay your service provider on one screen. One additional difference with the new system is that the scheduler can now choose which service zone to use to pay the service provider on the service request itself. The scheduler can also choose to pay the service provider using the service provider's home service zone. A new feature with this update is that you can now control which service codes are available to choose from for paying your service providers on a per customer basis. In the old system, it would show every single AP rate set in the dropdown list, regardless of whether or not they were applicable to the customer. Now you can control what this list looks like for each customer, so your schedulers are less likely to get confused. Now let's move on to the payroll reports. You might have seen the payroll reports in the old system. They had column names such as Earnings 3 Code and Batch ID, which were very specific to an ADP system that your company is probably not using. With the new system, you have complete control over the names and types of columns the service provider pay appears in. You may choose to consolidate all of the pay into a single amount column for simplicity or you may choose to break it out into separate columns for each service code or have a mix of the two. You may also choose to show only time or only rate or only amount columns or show all three. In the old system, USCED would forbid you from having staff paid at multiple rates within a pay period. In the new system, you can now have multiple rates for staff within a pay period. In this situation, USCED will simply add a new line to the payroll report for each rate. But keep in mind that this will happen only as long as you have the rate columns displayed in the payroll report. Now let's summarize the customer billing and service provider pay logic in the new system. For customer billing, the selected service code determines the rate the customer is billed at. For service provider pay, the selected service code and service zone determines the rate that which the service provider is paid. That's it. In the old system, there were pages of billing logic incorporating rate sets, pay indexes, and pecking orders, which made it, in some cases, challenging to get a straight answer to the questions, what am I billing this customer? And what am I paying this service provider for this assignment? We are pleased to roll out this new and improved system, which we feel will simplify and enhance the experience of billing your customers and paying your service providers with USCED. Now, let's touch on some of the other improvements that come with this updated billing system. You can now specify exactly what to bill customers and pay service providers for blocks, and also exactly what to pay service providers for contract days. In the old system, USCED would assume that you wanted to use the AR and AP rate set selected for the first assignment that touches the block or contract day, and USCED did not give you any way to override this. In the new system, however, you now specify exactly which service codes to use for customer billing and service provider pay for blocks and contract days. And they can be completely different from what are set up in the service request. 
the billing details screen, which used to be called Calculate ARAP, is vastly improved with much more detail regarding how an assignment is going to be billed to the customer and paid to the service provider. The billing menu has been consolidated and cleaned up. The services and service codes are now sorted by the sort index set up in the service first and then by the sort index set up in the service code. In the old system, some of these lists were sorted alphabetically and that didn't really give you any way to customize the order. One note of caution I want to leave you with is this. When you want to add new rates to bill your customers or to pay your service providers, please do not remove the old rates. You should expire them instead. The reason for this is because when you remove an old rate, you have removed it for all time, and this will affect any reports you run for historical dates. You should remove only rates that have been added in error or rates that have never been used before. This concludes the video where we have covered all of the differences between the old and the new billing systems in USCED. Please email any questions you might have to support at usced.com.